the Ten Commandments, which so many uh, political figures in this country are trying to have hung up in courthouses and other public buildings, uh, those people seldom actually know what the Ten Commandments are. <laughs> Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Is that really a moral principle we should be living by? At the time when that was written down, the Jews were polytheists, or had recently changed from polytheism. They believed that lots of gods existed, and they were under very strict instructions to worship only one of them, the jealous god. <laughs> Thou shalt make, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. A moral principle to live by. Don't make any graven images. <laughs> thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Are there better things to worry about? <laughs> Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. You may be familiar with the passage in Numbers 15.32, which I'll read to you. And while the children of Israel were in the wilderness, they found a man that gathered sticks upon the Sabbath day. And they that found him gathering sticks brought him unto Moses and Aaron, and unto all the congregation. And they put him in ward, because it was not declared what should be done to him. And the Lord said unto Moses, The man shall surely be put to death, and the congregation shall stone him with stones without the camp. And the congregation brought him without the camp, and stoned him with stones, and he died, as the Lord commanded Moses. What a wonderful moral God! <laughs> Honour thy father and thy mother. That's rather a good one. <laughs> but now listen to Jesus. If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Luke 14, 26. Well, finally, we come to what you might call the good commandments. There aren't very many of them. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, and so on. Thou shalt not kill. Well, that's a pretty good motto. <laughs> but you may remember Christopher Hitchens' sarcastic remark, saying roughly, Moses came down from the mountain with the tablets, and the Israelites said something like, well, I, I like to imagine it in John Cleese's voice. <laughs> oh, I see! Thou shalt not kill! Oh, how silly of me! We all thought it was a terrific idea to kill! <laughs> now we know better! Oh, silly me! Anybody who has ever read the Old Testament will certainly not wish to get their morals from it. And if you meet anybody who gets his morals from the Old Testament, uh, I think you'd be wise to give him a wide berth. <laughs> but it's not just the Old Testament. The New Testament is just as bad. The odious doctrine of the redemption of sins by Jesus. This is not Jesus' own doctrine, by the way. This is uh, St. Paul. Um, I used to know uh, a very distinguished scholar of ancient history uh, whose life's work was to try to decide whether Plato or St. Paul was the greatest shit of all time. <laughs> <laughs> the doctrine of the redemption of original sin is roughly like this. God, the creator of the universe, the divisor of the laws of physics, of quantum mechanics, of relativity. This genius God couldn't think of a better way to forgive our sins than to come down to earth as his outer ego, his son, and have himself hideously tortured and executed so that he could forgive himself <laughs> on behalf of all mankind, including future people, whether or not they actually intended to sin when their time finally came. 
actually, according to Christian theology, doesn't matter whether you personally sin, because whether you sin or not, you are born in sin. You inherit the sin of Adam. Adam, who we now know, of course, never existed. You inherit the sin of Adam, and it comes down to you, according to St. Augustine, via the seamen of all your male ancestors since Adam. What a disgusting doctrine. <laughs> we are all born in sin because of our remote ancestor Adam, who never existed, whose doctrine of original sin still goes on, even in churches such as the Roman Catholic Church, which presumably accepts that Adam uh, never existed. It's typical, by the way, of the theological mind in even the so-called sophisticated theological mind, that even when it's given up factual belief, such as in Adam, it carries on with the symbolism as though nothing had happened. It doesn't matter if the facts are disproved, you rescue them by turning them into symbols or metaphors or parables. <coughs> well, we better not get our morals from the New Testament either. <laughs> or the Quran, for that matter. I suppose the other way in which you might think you could get your morals from religion uh, would be fear of the divine spy camera in the sky. <laughs> fear that God will send you to hell. That when you're boiling in the lake of fire and your skin burns off, you promptly grow another skin. <laughs> so that you can feel the agony all over again. <laughs> there seems to be a sort of inverse relationship between the plausibility of a punishment and its, ter and its terribleness. If the idea of hell were remotely plausible, then it wouldn't have to be so horrible as it actually is. And sucking up to God in the hope of going to heaven is just about as bad, just about as ignoble a reason for being moral. 